All right, guys, so this floor here got water damage from the river that's right outside when it rose above flood stage. All this got flooded and ruined. So we're here to rehab this floor, and this is what this video is going to be about. They had to rip all these floors up, and we're going to put in a new floor. All right, hey, everybody, we're back on Monday. We're at the Quarry Tap Room in Hallwell fixing this flood damage floor. Putting down a urethane cement today. It goes down an eighth of an inch thick. And we broadcast some aggregate in the surface to help make it slip resistant to the great floor for commercial kitchens. So we got all our prep work done uh, the other day. We did our cove base and now we're out. We're getting our mixing station ready to go. We're almost ready to go here. So this is going to take about, this is about 600 square feet here. And we got behind the bar we're going to do too. Here's our mixing station. This is all our kits of urethane cement, part A, part B. The aggregate we've mixed with it. I think we're ready to go, Darren. Yep. And then once we get the kitchen area done, we're gonna come in here and they want us just to coat behind the bar too. So pretty much ready to go in here. That's what we're gonna show you today. Darren's just getting ready to start mixing. Mixed it. Mixing is we put the resin in, put the hardener in with the color. We got a little bit of gray color we're doing. Mix for 30 seconds, get that mixed up. Dump the aggregate in, mix for about a minute, and then we're ready to go. So once we get going, we don't want to stop. We want to go, go, go. This stuff does have quite a bit of working time here today, but um, it's still, it's fast and consistent is what we want to call it fast and consistent each kit goes 60 square feet it's 125 mils thick so we got everything measured out at 60 square feet so the first kit second third fourth fifth we've got about 10 kits we're doing in here those little round things there those are drains floor drains So the owners had that previous floor you saw in the beginning of the video ripped out and then they had a carpenter come in and install new new plywood flooring over the original plywood flooring which was which was okay underneath this we just wanted something new to go off from and something that was you know a little bit easier to clean so they put down a new layer of thin plywood and this this urethane cement man this this stuff bonds about anything <laughs> So you don't need a primer coat. It's got a moisture blocker built right into it. And what we're using is we're using a couple different types of gauge rakes just to rake it down to the right thickness. And that's basically how we spread it right there. And then I've got over to the right up against the wall, a couple different rollers. One's called the 18 inch, called a loop roller. That's probably all I'm gonna need. Then I got a little spiked roller there too if I, you know, if I do start seeing some outgassing or anything, I can use the spike roller for that. But um, what I'll what I'll end up doing is probably just loop rolling this just to level it out. The gauge rate gets it to the right thickness, and then the loop roller just helps level it out and smooth it out. Even though this stuff really self levels pretty good on its own once you gauge rake it out. Uh, so this is the basic process, you know. We we just going one kit at a time, I guess. You could mix two kits if you wanted to. If you had a bigger area, you could mix two kits at a time and go 120 square feet at a time. But this, this room's pretty small, so we're just gonna slowly work our way from one end to the other. And then <clears throat> once I get down a certain ways, you'll see here in a minute, I'm gonna stop broadcasting some aggregate into this for slip resistance in the kitchen. And what's good about the urethane cement is, you know, it's it's it can resist really high heat. So you can you can clean these floors with really really hot water and it's not going to damage the coating plus they're basically you know bacteria resistant bacteria free versus like an epoxy floor that could uh, be damaged from just bacteria uh, for from whatever you know food processing sitting on it whereas these urethane cement floors that's <clears throat> that's not going to bother them at all and as you can see we're going right over wood i mean it's perfectly fine to go over wood or concrete as long as there's no flex in the wood, um, this stuff's going to be fine. It's going to bond to it well. It's going to it's going to slightly move with it well. You just don't want any soft spots, spots that move, you know, up and down as you're walking on them, and you're going to be all good there.
The way we like to do these is we like to have two guys in the mixing station, one guy just to keep mixing, keep keep the flow going nice and steady. One guy, you know, kind of dumping the product back. He's he's moving the product back and forth with and dumping it out of the bucket. And then one guy gauge raking it. And then one guy coming back with the finish process, which is what I'm doing. You know, I'm loop rolling it as well as you'll see me here throwing the aggregate. So with four guys, this works really, really well. And this, like I said, this stuff here, this this is actually our first time using the ProRes product. We've used other companies' products before. This stuff had really good working time. Some of the other companies we've used, you know, you don't have as much working time. So you get you get one or two kits down and one guy's going right back throwing aggregate. So you kind of lose that one guy going back throwing aggregate. Uh, if you only got three guys, then now you're down to two guys. You know, one guy mixing, moving product, and one guy kind of spreading while that while the third guy's throwing aggregate before the stuff sets up too fast. So it was nice having plenty of working time with this stuff. And then it was nice having an extra guy here today, Eric. It was actually, Eric's actually a school teacher, the guy that's running the buckets back and forth. And today he, it was a holiday from school, so he could come in and help us work in the morning. This took us between this area here and the bar area you're going to see us do. It took us, you know, maybe a couple hours to get it all down, get it leveled out, get the aggregate in it. So it, it actually went pretty fast with four guys. All right, so far so good. It's going down really nice. Kind of self levels out after you loop roll it. And then you got to broadcast the aggregate in it. So the aggregate thing's a timing thing. If you broadcast it too early, it just keeps sinking down in the material. So, but you don't want to get on it too late. Otherwise your spike marks will show, you know, where you're broadcasting from. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a timing thing. I can tell the sheen, the sheen is kind of gone there where I broadcast some of that aggregate already. So once the sheen is gone, you're pretty good. You just want to cover it up. I don't have to completely cover it in aggregate, but once you get rid of the sheen, then you can keep moving your way back. So I'm gonna let this set up a couple more minutes here, then I'll broadcast some aggregate here. All right, so we're gonna finish rolling out here right by the stairs. We got that little piece left to do. We got the stairs and we're over here and behind. I'm trying to get around these this corner and all these pipes right here so that'll get us up out of this area and then we'll be back we'll be back when we uh do the bar area all right so there's there's that all finished up got the landing got the step done got all the aggregate thrown on there that's about what you want the aggregate to look like could go on a tiny bit heavier i guess if you wanted a little more texture but that's going to be good. That'll be non-slip tomorrow after we put the top coat on it. All right, we're going to go out. We're going to go out and do the bar now, so we'll show you that next. All right, so just getting ready to do the bar. That's been our mixing station. These are all buckets. Again, we mix one. Mix one kit at a time. I should take two kits is going to almost do this. One kit's going to go about halfway, then the second kit. We might need a part of the third kit. Probably give us a minute or two in between, Darren, that's all. Yep. And a lot of edges. So this went pretty good, actually. You know, behind the bars, around, it was around 160 square feet. Going right over, they put that new plywood right over that old stuff you guys saw. The old, the old stuff was just beat up a little bit from ripping the other floor out. It wasn't really rotten or anything like that. Just uh, rather than try to patch it and fix it, it was just easier to go right over the top of it. They had the room to go over it anyway because they're building up that other floor with that new hardwood flooring so this is going to end up matching up pretty good with that so they got to replace all the floors in here this is all going to be replaced with hardwood this all got damaged that down there that piece down there had 16 inches of water in it so they've already done the the new floor down there so they're getting there they got about hopefully a couple more weeks they can get open back up
Now this this ProRes urethane cement it can go as thin as five mils thick, which is which is quite thin actually, all the way up to a half an inch thick in one coat. And it really like what we liked about it. What I liked about it was I almost really didn't need to loop roll this like this. It really self leveled out good after you just gauge raked it. So the loop rolling part of this was just you know a little added insurance on spreading this out, and then. Throwing the aggregate in, as you can see, just make it slip resistant here behind the bar. So this should make it really easy to clean. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. We're gonna let that stuff cure up. We'll let it cure up overnight. Come back tomorrow. Basically tomorrow is just, you know, vacuum up any excess sand here and in the kitchen. And then we're ready to put the top coat on. The top coat is a very, uh, chemical resistant epoxy we're going over the surface same color roll it on and we're basically done so we're going to clean up here today we'll see you back tomorrow all right guys so we're back at Corey Tap for the finished coat this will be our top coat just putting a gray chemical resistant epoxy over the urethane cement a lot going on here today so we're just getting all we really need to do for prep today is vacuum up the excess the excess sand we threw down yesterday so loops in there vacuuming that up bar area came out good we'll probably do that second we'll do the kitchen area first go check that out darren's got the mixing stuff all ready to go this pot's all ready to go and here we are in here we scrape that down with a floor scraper just just to scrape up any excess sand any little tiny nubs scrape them down flat and then we vacuum and then we're ready to go so we're going to put it's a novalac chemical resistant epoxy over the top goes on about 130 square feet a gallon so we'll scrape that down with a squeegee tight back roll it we'll roll up the edges and then that'll be the finished coat for this i'm going to be go, get going here in just a couple minutes So with this epoxy, you got plenty of working time, just as long as you just dump it out of the bucket, get it onto the floor. And we decided to go with uh, about two gallons at a time. So we measured out, you know, this, our square footage was about 260. You can go 100 square feet a gallon, up to like 130 if you want on something like this. We'd, we'd figured we'd go 130, so we measured out 260, put a piece of tape. That way we know just how far we need to go. and. So that's kind of what we're shooting for square footage wise. And I mean, the stuff was really easy to work with. I, it just went down smooth as butter, kind of. And Luke's kind of squeegeeing it out for me. Then I'm coming back. I'm just giving it a couple rolls. And then I'll give it a finished back roll. And then it's just going to kind of level itself, smooth itself right out. And it gives the finish, the floor, a really nice finished look. And we, you know, before we did the floor here, we came in the day before and did like the cove base. We went up the walls three or four inches. Actually, I think that's six inches we went up the walls on this. And so we're, we're when we're doing this epoxy, when we're rolling it, we're rolling right up the wall too. So it's a completely seamless floor, which makes it really nice. All right, that went down pretty good. So Novolac chemical resistant epoxy over the urethane cement. Pretty much a bulletproof kitchen floor right here. As far as bacterial resistant, heat resistant, tough as nails. All right, here we go. So that's gonna do it for the kitchen. Looks good, gonna cure up really nice. Brand new floor. Uh, let's go get the let's go get behind the bar. Epoxy, you really don't want anything else going on because it creates a lot of dust. 
and then the dust is going to create bubbles or not bubbles but little bumps pimples like in the in the coating because of the dust settling in the coating so i don't know how much we can do about that we told them Thing about concrete guys mike day concrete check it out on youtube make sure you make sure you like make sure you subscribe you know if you like concrete type videos floor coating type videos we do all kinds of this stuff and then i also teach all this stuff in the concrete underground so if you want to check that out there's a link for it down in the description of the videos and you can go in there you know can join the uh the month monthly membership and i'm in there you can you can talk with me in there i'll help you with whatever you need plus there's all the training videos in there so make sure you check that out all right well that's gonna do it in the bar so everything's done a lot of work going on here today really loud <laughs> but they're trying to get everything back up and going here's the finished floor they got in there Again, that had 16 inches of water in it, so everything got ripped up. New flooring. This all got flooded. This had a couple inches of water in it, so they had to rip up all the flooring, putting back down the new flooring. They're trying to open up in a couple weeks, so a lot of subs here today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.